When I was a sophomore at the University of Florida, I was fortunate to, to be a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. And it was so surreal. All of a sudden, 12 Saturdays goes by, and you're literally sitting in New York City, and it's surreal. And there's the four of us, and we're finalists. And it gets near the end of the show. And one of the high, during a commercial timeout, not timeout, it's not a game, commercial uh, break, one of the Heisman trustees walks out, and he puts his hand over the mic, and he looks at the four of us, and he says, hey, guys, hey, just so you know, I want you to know that one of you, in just a couple of minutes, for the rest of your life, you will be introduced and known as Heisman Trophy winner. And it's like I was already nervous and now I'm just ready to puke. <laughs> and so Chris Fowler comes back out and they build up all the drama, you know, and a few minutes later, they announce me as a winner, it's surreal, and you walk up on stage and you're hugging all of these former winners that you looked up to for so long and it's such a cool opportunity, right? And, and then you walk off stage and you had a press conference and you're meeting with all the Heisman Trophy trusts and there's all these invitations and opportunities for you to do so many things. Well, one of the cool things was after the season, I got to fly to Thailand to speak to one of the biggest missionary organizations in the world was coming together to have a conference. And so I fly to Thailand and first couple of days were awesome. But then a little bit later in the trip, one of the, the missionaries goes, hey, Timmy, do you want to hop in the Jeep? We're going to do something pretty cool. And it's like, how do you say no? Of course you're gonna say yes. You're like, of course. So I, I hop in the Jeep and we, we start driving and I was like, hey, how, how long is this? And he was like, oh, it's just a little ways up there. By the way, I eat. That's missionary talk for buckle up because it's gonna be a while. And so we were driving through a while through all of these fields and we pull into these shanties which are just little tin sheds and we drive through all of them which was quite a while and we pull right through these shanties into this huge massive field massive field and there was a line of people that were all facing the other direction and it was literally about as far as my eyes could see and they stopped the jeep and we get out and I go what, what are we doing here what's going on and the missionary says hey this is a, a feeding center where every now and then we we gather up as much food as possible and we invite all the local villages and cities to come here if, if they don't have a place to get food. And I said, man, that's awesome. I gotta ask though, man, there's so many people. I literally barely can see from where the line starts to where the line ends. Do you really think you have enough food to feed all these people? He said, honestly, probably not. And I said, dang, well, it, is there anything that we can do to, to go get some more food? And he kind of took offense to that. So he's like, you don't think we're trying? And I said, sorry, well, what do you want us to do? And he said, we want you to get with these interpreters right here and start sharing and encouraging people from the back of the line to the front. And I said, okay. And so we started at the back of the line or we're working our way forward and we had been there for a long time. And I'm, sitting, I'm standing there talking to someone and one of the locals comes sprinting up to us and grabs me by my chest and pulls me and the pastors beside me tried to grab him because they thought he was attacking me, but I knew he just really, really wanted my attention. I said, it's okay, it's okay. And he starts trying to tell me something in broken English, and you, need, you guys need to understand, I'm from the South, I understand broken English. <laughs> but I had no idea what this dude was saying. And so he grabs me by his shirt again, and he points over here, and I was like, Sir, I'm so sorry. I don't understand what you're saying. And I say, would, would you please tell the interpreter? And, and so the interpreter says that to him. And you say, no, no, no. And he would only tell the interpreter that he would only tell me in my native tongue so that he would honor me. And I was like, well, thank you, sir, but I just can't understand it. So would you please tell him? And he would say, no, no, no. And so he grabbed me again by the shirt and he pulls me and he points. And I'll say, well, sir, th thank you, but I have no idea. You're literally just pointing at a, a, a mass of humanity, a group of people. I'm so sorry, sir, what are you pointing at? And he grabs me by the shirt and he pulls me over and he points. I, 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 sir, I, I have no idea. And he does it again, pulls me and he points. And by this time, some of the people had moved. And you see on the side of this feeding center was a massive ditch that was full of mud and also filth and sewage and trash. And there was a little boy that was squatting in it, about eight, nine, 10, 11 years of old, years of age. It was, it was hard to tell because he was so 
malnourished, that you look at his face and you could see all the bones in his face. You look at his throat and you could see all the bones in his throat. In his arms and you could see all the bones. And he had shorts and a t-shirt, but his shorts were so tattered that it barely looked like he was wearing shorts. And he had a, a shirt on that was also ripped and torn and tattered, but you could still make out what that shirt represented. You see, that boy in the middle of the jungle in Thailand was squatting in that ditch, wearing an orange and blue, number 15 Florida Gator Tim Tebow jersey. And I just remember, remember staring at that boy at a time when everybody said, hey, for the rest of your life, you're going to be introduced as Heisman Trophy winner. When they would say, hey, this year you were so successful. And then I'm standing there in Thailand and I'm looking at this boy and I'm reminded what really is success. And I'm looking at this boy that's wearing this jersey that has no idea what football is, has no idea what that number represents, has no idea about the Florida Gators, and definitely has no idea about some award called the Heisman Trophy. But I look at that boy and I know that he is starving for food, but he's also starving for hope. And I remember looking at him and just feeling like God was pressing it on my heart. You think that I just put you here for a game? What is that game going to do for that boy? I put you here for that boy. What is that jersey going to do for that boy? Nothing but you can. You know, it's funny to even think about someone probably bought that jersey and they're like, dang, Tebow's awesome, we love him. And then I threw a pick and he was like, he sucks. And then they're like, dude, get rid of the jersey, send it to the Salvation's Army, Samaritan's Purse, get it out. And they probably sent it overseas and it went from orphan to orphan to orphan, passed down to him. And he was like, I don't have another shirt, so I'll put on whatever this thing is. And he's wearing that because he has nothing else. He doesn't have another pair of shorts. He doesn't have another shirt. He doesn't have shoes. And, and what we think is, is so important, what we think is success is everything. And it is awesome. And I'm not telling you, don't be successful. I want you to be successful. I want to be successful. There's never been a day in my life I woke up and I played a game and I was like, hey, today I want to lose. I want to be successful. But man, when I'm looking at that boy and I'm reminded, you know there's one thing that is so much more important than success, and that's significance. And I remember walking over to that boy with tears coming down the side of my face, and he's standing up looking at me, probably like, why is this dude standing over me? I couldn't help it, I gave him a hug. And he's, now he's probably like, why is this white dude touching me? And I was so grateful that day that I got to meet that boy. And ultimately, I believe that he found food and hope that day. But I was reminded ultimately of what really matters. See, if you get everything that you're searching for, what do you have? Is it really enough? Is what you're going for, is what you're training for, is what you're competing for, is what you're lifting for, if you get it, what do you really have? Because ultimately, man, if it's just success, man, I've been around a lot of people, a lot of friends that have called me late at night. We've had conversations and they've had everything that the world says mattered. And they said, man, I thought it was gonna be so much more. And man, I hope that you're successful. You're already an eight percenter. Maybe you're gonna be a one percenter. And if you get there, but you didn't make anybody's life better, 
He didn't believe in anybody else. You didn't help them. You didn't have real compassion for them or compassion with them. You forgot everything that really mattered and all you had was a bunch of stuff. What was it all for? George Dinkins, the founder of Publix, who was known for being so generous. He was known for hiring people with special needs at Publix and that's literally one of the reasons my mom pretty much only shops there still to this day. But George Jenkins, who, who, who built Publix into so many stores and was so successful, on his deathbed, all these people wanted to, to interview him. And there was this one young man who over and over and over and over again asked, can I please interview him? Can I please interview him? Can I please interview him? And so George and his team said, yeah, let, let this guy come in. So this young man interviews George Jenkins a lot about success and about finances and about money and prestige. And George answers all of these questions. And he says, Mr. Jenkins, I just, I just gotta tell you, thank you so much for letting me interview. It means so much to me. It really does. Mr. Jenkins, thank you for the time. I just have one more question. Mr. Jenkins, if you were so successful, you made so much money. Mr. Jenkins, if you wouldn't have given away so much, how much would you be worth? George Jenkins thinks for a moment and he looks back at this young man and he says, son, probably nothing. Because there's a big difference between success and significance. And I hope that every single one of you know that you can have them both. But if all you have is success, then maybe one day you're gonna be thinking, I thought it was more. But if you have success and significance, now you're taking your platforms, your opportunity, everything that God has given you, and you're taking that success and you're turning it into significance because you were reminded and you remember that it's not just about you. That it's also about other people. And your job isn't just to accumulate things and be successful, be prestigious, and have a lot of stuff because you can't take it with it. But you also know there's a difference between inheritance and legacy. Inheritance is what you leave behind for someone. Legacy is what you leave behind in someone. I hope you're successful. I hope you're significant. I hope you don't just leave inheritance, but you leave a legacy. Thank you so much and God bless. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. When I was um, an eighth grader, about to be a ninth grader, I, uh, I had the opportunity to play on the, the varsity football team and I had looked forward to it my entire life. And I was so excited for it and my brother, one of my brothers was gonna be a senior. And I